Uh, greetings, I'm Bura Kazanç, coming from Turkey. The, the, I'm working with the Turkish employment agency, Ishkur. I'm an employment expert. Uh, today's topic that I'm going to talk about is, uh, I'm sorry, I've overpassed a little bit. Uh, <laughs> the Provincial Employment and Vocational Training Boards is the topic that I'm going to be talking about today. But before that, I want to show you a little bit about my organization, what Ishkur is, what it does. Uh, Ishkur was founded in uh, 1946, and by the time it was found, it was the only public employment agency available. Also, there were no private employment agencies also, but it was the only agency uh, doing this this kind of work. And for a lot of years, Ishkur uh, continued its basic functions, but with the needs of the changing era, uh, in year 2003, we uh, decided to change the agency to, to a new form, a whole new form, actually. Uh, its name was uh, transferred into Ishkur. It, it wasn't Ishkur before, it was something different. Uh, its name was transferred into Ishkur, and we had new services added. Uh, we started giving the Unemployment Insurance Fund service, which was already being discussed for many years before. Uh, but in 2003, it was legalized, and finally uh, we put this into practice, the Unemployment Insurance Fund. Uh, we are giving effective, active and passive labor market programs, and we also uh, create sustainability policies for crisis periods like uh, short work benefits, uh, things like that. Yeah. In 2012, we have uh, expanded our numbers uh, by recruiting 4,000 job and vocational counselors. And uh, by, by that date, by 2011, our personal number was around 3,000. And uh, after the uh, recruitment of the JVCs, the job and vocational counselors, the total number increased by 4,000 and with some additional recruitments. At the end of that year, it was around 8,500. 8, and today, it's almost around 10,000. And my organization will grow even larger and stronger as the days pass. Uh, this is the uh, organizational level of my uh, organizational chart of my um, uh, agency. Uh, as you can see, there are three main uh, organs of the agency, the general board, the administrative board, and the directorate general. But also there's a fourth uh, other organ that, that still is included in our agency. It is the topic of today, uh, provincial employment and vocational training boards. That's why I'm going to, that's why I'm going to talk about today. Uh, in our legal text, the provincial employment and vocational training boards are described like this. They are public institutions that are formed at the basis of uh, creating and implementing employment and vocational training policies at the provincial level. Uh, second, preventing unemployment and maintaining or, and or increasing the current employment level. And as the third one, determining the required labor qualification and the vocational education at the provincial level. That's what is written in our legal tests, texts, but this doesn't describe much because this, this sets as uh, a frame for what, what the PVTBs are. So I'm going to explain it in detail. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the historical development of the PVTBs, how they are developed. It started in 1995 in January. Uh, the, the basis of the tripartite structure uh, that, that is so popular, you know, the, the employee side, the employer side, and the government side, all uh, forming t a, a three-sided structure. Uh, they formed the basis of the tripartite structure, and it was named Local Label Council, Councils. Uh, this served as an early form of the public employment and vocational training boards, but they only had one main function, really. All they did was uh, they uh, determined the number and the type of labor force training programs. That's all they did, but still that was a start for the process. And then in October 2000, uh, there was a transition made from the local labor councils to provincial employment boards with additional functions. Uh, I'm not going to count them uh, all one by one, but uh, let's say they acquired some functions to give assistance and give some suggestions to the policymakers. That, that functions were added back then. And then finally, in 2008, the, with the latest change, provincial employment boards merged with a similar board called the provincial vocational training boards that were uh, functioning under the Ministry of National Empl uh, Education, sorry. 
education. Uh, because of the similar uh, area of work, they were merged together, thus creating the today's provincial employment and vocational training boards. Uh, the functions are written here, but I'm going to sum it up for you, for it's too long. Uh, their, uh, today's provincial employment and vocational training boards function as decision-making bodies. They make the decisions about employment policies and vocational training policies at the provincial level. Uh, but, uh, let, if we take a, a look at the uh, previous steps, first, it, it only determined the number of, training force pro of labor force training programs. Second, they ha had acquired the uh, function of providing assistance and suggestions. And as the third step, they became decision-making bodies themselves. Uh, that was the uh, historical development. So let's see. Uh, yes, uh, that was the historical development of the boards. The boards are decision-making bodies uh, that, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, they, they are the main deci deciders what, uh, what to do to increase employment and tackle unemployment at the provincial levels. This serves as a form of decentralization. Uh, and the, the boards have a large, large variety of contributors from all over di different uh, organs. Uh, there's a list over there, but shortly I may say there are rep representatives from government sites. There are representatives from employers and employees association confederations. And there are also different uh, contributors from universities, from dif uh, development agencies, and all they, uh, they all come together to create policies uh, at the regular meetings they held every January, April, July, and October. Hence, the meetings are being held four times regularly a year. But depending on the special situations, uh, let's say if an urgent need arises, then additional meetings may be held. There are no obstacles in front of that. Uh, special meetings may be held. Plans and actions will be devised, discussed during the meeting about the current situation and the needs of the low labor market at the provincial level. And by the way, decisions that are taken by this board will be obligatory for all relevant bodies to implement. Let's say uh, there's a decision that's, that has been made about the provincial directorate of national education. If a decision has been made, then the uh, provincial directorate uh, have to uh, abide by it. They, they have to do what is necessary according to that decision. Uh, the boards also prepare annual reports about their activities. The, the, the Turkey has 81 provinces, so that makes 81 separate PVTBs. Uh, they prepare separate 81 reports and send it back to the general director, to our, our branch. And as the general director, we analyze each report separately, and then we prepare the uh, whole report about the whole of Turkey, the annual PVTB report. Then we uh, publish the report at our website, and also we send the report to the relevant bodies. PVTBs uh, being boards on their own, but they still have two subboards working under them, namely the executive boards and the supervisory boards. And what they do are executive boards, as the name suggests, they are the executive organs of the provincial employment and vocational training boards. They are consisted of five members, one coming from Ishkor, one coming from provincial directorate of national education, and three, uh, three from other PVTB members, member organizations. Their meetings are uh, uh, meet, held at least once a month. Of course, this is a minimum. They, they may have uh, unlimited meetings depending on the situation. It's up to them. They are the deciders of that. Uh, they have lots of uh, functions they do. But let's say they uh, mostly deal with technical background duties and they monitor the decisions taken by the main board. They are the... Uh, Yes, they, they do the monitor duty mainly. And then they are also the supervisory boards. What they do is they monitor, they evaluate, they supervise the active labor market programs decided by the PVTBs. Uh, as an example, I can give you on the job trainings and vocational trainings that are decided by the PVTBs. The supervisory boards are consisted of two members only, one coming from Ishkur, the, the same formula as the other one, one coming from Ishkur and one from other PVTB member organizations. 
By the way, there is no limit uh, of how many supervisory boards are created. I mean, there may be five supervisory boards in a provincial territory because uh, all that supervising program may be too much for one board. So the, we encourage the provincial directorates to form additional uh, supervisory boards. It is much more effective. Uh, the supervisory boards have their own agendas. Uh, they are monthly prepared by the Ishkur provincial directorates. But as the main decision-taking bodies are the PVTBs, the agendas are sent to the head of the PVTBs, who are the governors of the province. And then uh, the agenda is, when the agenda is approved, then the supervision may start. By the way, if there are additional complaints or reports about illegal activities that are going with the uh, active labor market programs, then obviously additional inspections may be held. There, there is nothing, uh, there is no obstacles in that way. Uh, now I want to talk a bit about the problems and situations, uh, the solutions for the situations that we faced. Uh, the first two of them, I've actually uh, talked about them already. There were no executive organs and no supervisory organs that were present. And uh, in 2006, the executive boards were formed with the provincial employment boards, the form before the current form. Uh, and the supervisory boards were formed in 2008 as the public employment and vocational training boards were newly formed. That was solutions for, the, uh, for these two problems. And the uh, uh, number of regular meetings were insufficient before. They were only one meeting. Uh, before uh, then, we, we changed it by changing the legal context, and there, now the meetings are held every three months a year, I, I told before, January, uh, April, June, and October. And then there weren't uh, enough social partners in the boards. They were ob obviously social partners, but the number of them seemed a bit uh, insufficient for us. So we tried to grow it even larger, uh, with the, this uh, enlargement, enlargement process started with the PEBs, but then with the PEBTBs it grew even larger. Finally, uh, with the new legislation in 2011, it, uh, the, the frame of the social partnership increased further by inclusion of new partners like development agencies. And uh, the, the thing that's coming now was a problem as well. Uh, women in labor market were not represented sufficiently in the boards. That was a problem as well. And we found the solution by including women NGOs in the boards. Uh, there's a legal text that is promulgated by our prime ministry. And it was uh, basically, it was about the woman's status in social life. In this legal text, we included a uh, article that required women NGOs were to be invited to the PVTB regular meetings. Uh, as the conclusion, I can say that PVTBs are one of the key decision-making bodies of Ishkur for they are decentralized. They are the main, main tools of preventing unemployment and shaping the labor markets optimally at the local level because we believe that everyone knows its geography the best uh, and uh, one living in a province will be the right person to combat the employment, uh, to create the policies to combat the employment because they know the area the best. Uh, they serve as a connection between local authorities and NGOs, so by doing this they function both as a decision-making body and a social dialogue mechanism. And also they enable policy making at a local level, as I mentioned, and that's, that sums it all, I think. That is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you all for your patience. Thank you.